Hey guys, welcome back to the Respiratory Therapy Resource Center. So today's video is gonna be about giving report, right? So whether you're night shift or day shift, what things do you wanna include in report? What is important? What's relevant? Things that are pertinent, right? So that's what this video is gonna be about. And I am going to make this ebook PDF available to you on my website free of charge. It's gonna be at respiratorytherapyrc.com. You can have this entire PDF for yourself, for your own notes. It's gonna have a lot of good information. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me out so I can keep making videos just like this one to help you guys out, to give you more information, things that I've learned along the way that I think would be useful for other people, okay? So uh, without further ado, let's begin with giving report. Okay guys, so this video, like I said, is about giving report, the things that you wanna include when you are giving report, whether you're day shift or night shift, pertinent things, relevant things, things that you may forget to think about. And what I've done is, is I've used this PowerPoint and I've turned it into a PDF so you guys can actually get all of these notes and all of these things in this PowerPoint at my website, respiratorytherapyrc.com. You can download it free of charge and it'll be emailed to you, okay? So without further ado, let's kind of talk a little bit more about giving report, things you wanna include and things you don't. So when you're giving report, there's a few types of report, right? So there's like the mainstream types of giving report. There's IPASS, right? So you're talking about illness severity, patient summary, action list, situation awareness, closed loop communication, right? So that's another one. So there's IPASS, this is one way of giving report. This is more like a standardized way of giving report. And then you have SBAR, which is a pretty standardized way of giving report as well. And then you have Jaime's method, right? So I'm Jaime and this is how I used to take notes as a scribe. So I actually started out in the ER, I was a medical scribe and I would take notes for the doctor. So it kind of carried over into my note taking for my respiratory therapy patients, right? So. This is how I did it. This is what I made. I had a clipboard that I would take around with me and I would divide it into two, right? So the left side was one patient, the right side was another. So on the left side at the top, you'd have the room number, patient's name, ET tube size and depth. And I swear you guys, there was another piece right here in this bottom corner right here and I forgot what it was. I forgot what I used to put there. It's been a while. Um, now a lot of it's just like off the top of my head, right? So anyways, this is what I used when I was first starting out and it was very helpful to keep track of everything because there's so many things that are happening with our patients. It's a very dynamic situation. It's very fluid. That's how the ICU is. Things are changing. Patient status is changing. All these things are changing, right? So we have to keep track of all of it. And it can be very confusing, especially if you're a new grad and you're trying to keep track of what time was when, what time you intubated, what time you started nitric and heliox, all these things need to be documented, right? So this is like a general sheet, right? And then I have a few examples we can go through, right? So we have fairy godmother, patient fairy godmother, what is she here for? She's here for a CHF exacerbation. She came in yesterday. When was she here? Yesterday, right? And then she was in the ED. She was intubated for respiratory failure, right? So a little bit of her past medical history. You have CHF, asthma, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, all these things. You have some of her vent settings there, her most recent ABG, her chest x-ray, her most recent chest x-ray. And a lot of times with chest x-rays, you also want to talk about what it looked like compared to the previous x-ray, right? Because you want to see the change. You want to see if they're getting worse or better. And in order to do that, you need to look at both the previous and the present day chest x-ray, right? So you also want to talk about certain events, pertinent information, secretions, x-rays, improvement, you know, non-improvement, all these things, right? Some pertinent things like Lasix, mild sedation, all these things. You want to talk about the plan. You want to talk about, okay, what's the plan to wean sedation, do an SBT overnight, extubate in the morning. That's where we're headed, right? So you kind of want to talk about those things. And the plan is a plan, okay? So don't, oh, sometimes you're not always going to be able to stick super close to the plan. You can have a plan, but it doesn't mean the plan is always going to go as planned, right? That's kind of what happens with plans sometimes. 
So this is example one. Let's look at another example. Example two, right? So you have room number, whatever. You have the ET tube and 8025 at the teeth. You have Shrek, right? That's the name of the patient. And then you have a little bit about Shrek. Why is he here? He's flu positive. He has bilateral pneumonia. He was intubated for hypoxemic respiratory failure. And then his past medical history, interstitial lung disease, diabetes, epilepsy, obesity. You have to know something about your patient, right? You don't have to know every detail about your patient, right? Not the way the physicians do or the nurses do, but you need to know at least their respiratory history, right? Like it's going to be pertinent and relevant to our job, right? And what you'll find is as time goes on, you'll see that many other organ systems are going to affect the respiratory system. So in part, starting out, you need to know a lot about the respiratory system everything that's pertinent, but you will you will see that everything is going to be affecting the respiratory system as you go on. The brain, the heart, the kidneys, all these other organ systems are going to affect breathing, right? So you have the settings there, you have the ABG there, you have what the chest x-ray look like, right? You have events that are pertinent. Okay, well, we started Q4 NEBS. We started IPV today to try and clear up that pneumonia. We gave him a little bit more sedation because he was getting rowdy, because he was trying to get out of bed. We did a mini bowel to see if he didn't just have flu, but maybe he also has a superimposed bacterial pneumonia that of some unforeseen origin, right? So then you're also doing all these other things. These are the things you wanna give and report. You wanna talk about the secretions, if the secretions change color, what they were before, what they were in the morning versus what they are now. And you also wanna talk about the plan. Okay, well, we're waiting for the mini bowel results. We're gonna continue IPV. We're gonna continue with the nibs. And maybe he may get a bronch tonight, right? So they may go down and do a bronchoscopy. So this is another example of the report and things that I think would be relevant and pertinent, right? So, and again, this is all going to be yours. You can go to my website. You can have this entire PDF for yourself, right? Example number three, you have Pooh Bear. Pooh Bear got a little happy on a Friday night, drug overdose, right? On heroin last night, he went apneic in the ER, so they intubated him for apnea, right? So you have his past medical history, drug use, homeless, CKD, asthma, right? This is some of his past medical history, you have his vent settings there, you have his ABG there, you have his chest x-ray looks clear because remember, his lungs aren't the reason he's in the hospital. He's in the hospital because he overdosed because he went apneic from an overdose, right? Not because he, he had trouble breathing, not because he has an infection, right? It's not, he has good lungs, right? So his x-ray is clear. And other events that are pertinent, he was intubated in the morning. You also want to give like a time frame, if not an exact time of when the patient was intubated so that the person you're giving report to has an idea of where they stand, right? And so you're talking about the vent setting changes that you made, that the gas is corrected and it looks good. Family may not know. You're going to tell a little bit, you're going to talk a little bit about family and what family knows, what family doesn't know, how much you can say to the family. Family dynamics are very important, right? So you want to know what the family knows and what they don't know. And typically we go in and we do our job. We're not going to chat too much. We'll answer all the medical questions, but there are certain things that we just should keep to ourselves, right? It's really conversations for the physician to have with the family, right? Especially in this situation where they may not know that their loved one had a drug problem, right? So anyways, so then you go to the plan. They're not on sedation. They're waiting for him to wake up on his own, right? Because he was, oh, because he OD'd, right? So they plan to SBT him once he wakes up and extubate him hopefully after that, right? So, so these are, this is example number three. Moving on to some other relevant things and events to mention in your report, you know? So those are some general examples. Here are some more uh, concrete things that you can, you know, keep in mind to mention, right? So like secretions, chest x-rays, ABGs, peak pressures, plateau pressures, are they reaching that high plateau pressure of 30? Are they getting close to that? Are they at risk for borrowed trauma? Were they auto-peeping? Were they hyperinflated? Was their lung compliance getting better, getting worse? 
Did you have to manually bag them for any reason, right? So you can read through the rest of these. You can go to my website, download the PDF. It's yours. You can have all of these notes, right? So another thing, plans and procedures. Are they going to get a central line? Are they going to get a trach? Are they looking at ECMO as a possibility of treatment for this patient? Are they looking at transplants? Are they looking at, you know, bedside dialysis, CRRT, lab test results, mini valves, other other types of procedures, other types of plans for the patient, right? Most of them are going to be like diagnostic and therapeutic things, right? Therapeutic interventions. So how are they responding to treatment? All of these things, right? So you can have this. This is on my website. You can have all of this. You don't have to like take a bunch of notes, okay? So patient acute changes, right? So we call an acute change anything that is new, that happened, that wasn't there before, right? So it's an acute change. Oh, that is not how the patient was this morning. If we're talking about mentation, right? So we're like, oh, he wasn't acting like that this morning. He was alert and oriented times three. He knew who he was. He knew where he was. And now he doesn't, right? That's an acute change. Or he didn't have any secretions in the morning. And now he has a lot of secretions. That's an acute change, right? Something that changed, that's different, that wasn't there before, right? So here are some examples of acute changes, desaturation episodes. Well, he wasn't doing that yesterday. Now he's doing that. Mucus plugging, increased secretions, change in mentation, all of these things, right? So neurological status. A big one I want to point out is the withdrawal symptoms and the gag reflex, right? The strong cough and the gag reflex. Always assess for gag reflex. It's just something you may happen to come across, right? If they're waiting for a patient to wake up and you suction the patient and there's no gag reflex or, you know, you do oral care and there's no gag reflex, there's no cough, that's something that you always want to bring up to the team. Just let them know, you know, hey, there was no cough when I did oral care, when I did suctioning, you know, maybe we should think about something neurological, right? So, you always want to bring up those things, chest x-ray changes, lung collapse, VAP, all these things, right? So these are patient acute changes that you would just keep in mind to mention and pass on and report. As well as patient-related things, this is more about the patient and the demeanor, the affect of the patient, right? The discharge plans, the allergies to medications, the patient comfort, is the patient a frequent flyer, they're poorly managed, they don't take their medications, all these things kind of about the patient, right? Are they awake? Are they alert? Their mentation? Are they cooperative? Are they not cooperative, right? Are they hesitant to follow the rules, to take their medications, right? So these are things, patient-related things, right? And then you have family-related things. You also want to know about family, right? So if you learn some things about the family that you think are relevant to pass on in a report, please do so because we want to know that, right? We want to know if the family's anxious, worried, nervous, how the family is feeling. We want to know who the family is. We want to know, is it the brother? Is it the sister? Is it the wife? Is it the girlfriend? Is it the wife and the girlfriend, right? So we want to know those things before we walk into the room, right? So talk about family-related things and pass those things on in report, right? So Here's some other listed things for you um, of like family related things and you can have this. It's on my website free of charge. Okay. Okay. So that concludes all the things that I think are relevant in giving report. Of course, there's going to be so many other things that other people may find relevant. And this is, these are just some of the things that I have found in my experience. There's other people who also have different experiences that are going to add to this list, right? So I'm sure there's, plenty of things. And I hope that this is going to give you kind of a jump start as you're starting off as a new grad. And I hope that this can be some kind of a guide as you are giving report to more experienced RTs as to what they're really looking for from you, right? Like what are they trying to hear from you? What do they, what do they think is relevant and pertinent? Another piece of advice from me to you would be if you think it's relevant, then it's relevant. Okay. Don't worry that an, another RT may not think that what you're saying is relevant. It's really irrelevant, right? Like if you think it's important for you to pass on and report, pass it on and report. So if you think it's relevant, go ahead and pass it on and report. And then, you know, trust me, they're going to be thankful that you told them anything that you found relevant. Okay, so that kind of concludes this section of giving report. These are just a few things that I've 
you know, put together and they're available for you guys on my website. And don't forget to follow me on social media. I have my website, respiratorytherapyrc.com, Instagram, respiratorytherapyrc, YouTube, you're watching my YouTube channel right now, or maybe you're watching this on another platform, you know, go follow me on Facebook, Twitter. My email is resptherapyrc at gmail.com. You can email me for any questions. Maybe you got the ebook and it wasn't emailed to you or you couldn't find it. So go ahead and send me, you know, an email, shoot me an email with any questions you might have. I really hope this helps you guys as new grads, you know, or anybody watching this, maybe not just new grads, and it gives you like a solid foundation of how to give report and impress your colleagues, right? Okay, so have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to visit my website, respiratorytherapyrc.com. Have a good one. Until next time, bye.